Richard, how concerned are you about spiking cases uh, here in the U.S.? I mean, interestingly, in Europe, some countries' cases are already starting to decline, even if the deaths are still rising. Uh, does that give you hope that it'll only be temporary here and it won't have to ma majorly derail economic activity? Well, well, Will, there's a couple of things you said there. First, um, although kind of morbid to talk about this, one has to remember that deaths are lagging indicators, right? The, the cases will go down before deaths go down, cases go up before deaths go up. It's a horrible topic, but that's unfortunate reality. So the, we should see cases go down before we see the deaths go down. That's, that's perfectly natural. Um, I think for the economy overall, here in the United States, you know, what we're kind of, what we're going to mimic and what we already are mimicking is the Chinese experience, right? What you found in China was the production came back very quickly, but anything that revolved around social interaction took a much longer time to come back to normal. And so, you know, they didn't have the big second wave. They certainly didn't have the third wave that we're having right now. So we have to kind of push out that timeline for social interaction and the effect it has on the economy. Does it impact the the outlook that you have, Stephanie, for the economy? I know you've been relatively upbeat around the economic data and the prospect for stimulus. Are you starting to worry? Not yet, because I still believe that the fiscal and monetary policy stimulus that are already in place are doing its job. I mean, we certainly saw a V-shaped recovery in housing, auto, and manufacturing. Even consumer has hung in there, and that savings rate at 14 percent is still so impressive to me. There's $4.8 trillion of money in money market funds on the sidelines. The average is $2.5 trillion. So there is money to be put into this market once we get a little more confidence. But you know what? When we get confidence, we're going to be a heck of a lot higher in terms of the stock market, in my opinion. So you do have to have this approach of a balanced portfolio, picking quality companies. And you don't even have to pick the second or third tier companies, right, especially on the cyclical side, because those stocks are still down so much. But I think you want to be so that's where you want to be on cyclicals, right? Quality balance sheets, dividends, dividend growing, liquidity, and that sort of thing. Technology. I would love to buy more Alphabet for for uh, for an example. What a great quarter that they had with total revenue up 15 percent. I mean, ad revenues are certainly recovering up north of 30 percent, and they are actually lagging the other Fang stocks. So I'm making my shopping list, guys. As I said before, I've got a list of 10 names, and they're a combination, and I will pick my spots to be buying them. Richard, how concerned are you about uh, ongoing political drama and what it implies for, for when we might actually see significant fiscal stimulus? Well, well, Will, um, uh, drama is the right word, right? I mean, that's the, the name of the game these days. Um, and I think, uh, uh, look, the, the only, so I've said this many times, the only certainty that's out there for 2021 is continued uncertainty whether that be politics, whether that be the virus, no matter what it is. And I think, you know, Stephanie kind of mentioned this. I think the, the and I agree with her on this, I think that the correct strategy here is some kind of a barbell between safe haven stocks and I would argue deep cyclicals. She prefers the higher quality cyclicals. I would argue more deeper cyclicals and have something on either end of the seesaw because you really don't have any insight as to what's going on. Look, there's going to be uber bulls and there's going to be uber bears. And somebody's going to be right, right? And they'll be in the Performance Hall of Fame. But realistically, for a portfolio manager like myself, is that the prudent way to manage client assets? You don't guess. You have to really sit there and measure the risk on each side and try to construct a portfolio accordingly. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.